Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we talked about different types of Exchange Hybrid deployments. We discussed Exchange Hybrid deployment components. We talked about benefits of Exchange Hybrid, types of Exchange Hybrid deployments, and what features are included in each type of Exchange Hybrid deployment. In this particular video, we will be talking about the requirements and prerequisites for Exchange Hybrid deployment, and we will meet all those prerequisites one by one. Before you run Hybrid Configuration Wizard in your on-premise Exchange server, your on-premise Exchange organization needs to meet certain requirements or prerequisites. If you do not meet these requirements, you won't be able to complete these steps within the Hybrid Configuration Wizard, and you won't be able to configure a hybrid deployment between your on-premise exchange and exchange online. So let's talk about these prerequisites in detail. The first prerequisite for exchange hybrid is a supported exchange server version and the updates. If you are running exchange server 2010 in your on-premise, you can use the same exchange server as a hybrid server. That means you can deploy exchange hybrid using exchange server 2010 but it has to be Exchange Server 2010 SP3 with latest updates. You can also have other versions installed along with Exchange Server 2010, like Exchange 2013 and 2016, and you can use one of these servers for hybrid deployment. Similarly, if you have Exchange 2013 in your on-premise environment, you can make any one of these three Exchange servers as a hybrid server but you cannot use Exchange 2010 for Exchange Hybrid deployment if you have Exchange Server 2013. If you have Exchange Server 2016 and 2019 installed in your on-premise, you can use any one of these two versions for hybrid deployment. And if you have Exchange 2019 installed in your on-premise, you can use same server for Exchange Hybrid deployment but you cannot use earlier versions for hybrid deployment if you have Exchange 2019 installed. And you need to make sure that the on-premise Exchange server is running on the latest cumulative update. If it is not the latest update, you can install immediate previous update as well. The next prerequisite is Exchange Server roles. If you are running Exchange 2016 or 2019 in your on-premise, you need at least one mailbox server installed. If you are running Exchange 2013, you need to install at least one mailbox role and one client access server role. You can install mailbox role and cache role either on the same server or on separate servers. And if you are running Exchange 2010, at least one mailbox role, one hub transport role, and one cache role should be installed in your on-premise exchange environment. And if you have edge transport server installed in your on-premise, that server also has to be running on the latest cumulative updates. Next prerequisite for exchange hybrid is you need to assign a license for your on-premise exchange server before you run hybrid configuration wizard. If you are running exchange 2010, 2013, or 2016 exchange version, HCW will assign a free license to your hybrid server. That means if you do not have assigned a license to your on-premise exchange server, when you will run HCW, it will automatically detect and will assign a free license to your exchange server. But as of now, HCW cannot assign a free license to Exchange 2019. So if you are running Exchange 2019 in your on-premise, you need to assign a license to your exchange server before you run HCW. Next prerequisite is a supported license in Office 365 tenant. All Office 365 plans are supported in Exchange Hybrid except Microsoft 365 apps for business and home plans. The next prerequisite is custom domains. A custom domain is a domain that you have purchased from a domain provider. The domain that you are using in on-premise, you need to verify that domain in your Office 365 tenant. The next prerequisite for hybrid deployment is you need to install Azure AD Connect server in your on-premise. Azure AD Connect tool is responsible for synchronizing your on-premise identities to Office 365. 
This will ensure creation of mail users in Exchange Online with an Exchange grid that matches the on-premise mailbox. The next prerequisite is you need to publish auto discover record in your public DNS that will be pointed to your on-premise Exchange server. If on-premise Exchange version is Exchange 2016 or 2019, then you will point auto discover record to mailbox server. And if on-premise Exchange version is Exchange 2010 or 2013, then you will point auto discover record to client access server. The next most important prerequisite for Exchange hybrid deployment is certificate. You need a certificate for your Exchange server that is issued by a third party certification authority. For hybrid migration, you cannot use a self signed certificate. It has to be issued from a third party certification authority. And when you will create that certificate for your Exchange server, you need to add mail.domain.com and autodiscover.domain.com within the subject alternative name of that certificate. So once you have met all these prerequisites, you are ready to run hybrid configuration wizard. Now let's move towards our lab and let's complete all these requirements and prerequisites one by one. First, let's verify the version and build number of Exchange Server. You can verify the version of Exchange Server from Exchange Admin Center and from PowerShell as well. From Exchange Admin Center, you will go to Servers. Make sure Server tab is selected. Under Version, you will see the version and the build number of Exchange Server. From Exchange Management Shell, you will run get hyphen Exchange Server and look for Admin Display Version Attribute. So here we can see version is 15.2 and build number is 986.5. Now, how would you identify if you are using the latest version of Exchange Server or not? You will go to TechNet article that is exchange server version and build number. Open this article. In this article, you will search the version and the build number. So currently I'm using exchange server 2019 CU11. The latest CU is 12. This was rolled out on 20th of April this year, this month, and the previous release is CU11. So that means I'm not using the latest one, but I'm using the immediate previous release of Exchange Server. Next, we will assign license to our on-premise Exchange Server. To assign license, you can click on Enter Product Key on the right. Make sure you are in Servers, then Servers, and then Enter Product Key. On this particular wizard, you will enter a product key for Exchange Server 2019 so that you can activate Exchange Server. And if you will not enter the product key, by default, it will say standard trial edition. So let me enter the product key. So I have assigned a product key for Exchange Server and now it says enterprise and it says licensed. But I have to restart information store service. So let's go to services.msv and look for Microsoft Information Store Service and let's restart this service. So this is done. And let me refresh the page. Let's go to servers. So now it says enterprise and licensed and that warning is gone. Next, we will verify the certificate. Go to certificates. Here we have a third party SSL certificate that we have got from Let's Encrypt. Under subject alternative names, we can see the domain name autodiscover.domain.com and mail.domain.com is added. So this prerequisite is also met. Next, we need to make sure that we have autodiscover record published in our public DNS for on-premise domain and that auto discover record should point to our on-premise exchange server. So in my case, 
CNAME record for auto discover is pointing to my on premise mailbox server. That is mail.office365concepts.com. Next, we need to make sure we have Office 365 tenant. I have already created one trial tenant, which is valid for 30 days. And I will be using this tenant for hybrid migration or hybrid deployment. And the next prerequisite says you need supported licenses in Office 365 tenant. When you create Office 365 tenant, you get Office 365 E3 trial license. You get 25 licenses. Those are valid for 30 days. So for test environment, these licenses are enough. And if this is your production environment, then if you want, you can purchase extra licenses as per your business requirement. Now, so this part is done as well. The next prerequisite says we need to verify the on-premise domain in Office 365. In my environment, I am using a domain in on-premise that is office365concepts.com. So I need to verify the same domain in Office 365 tenant as well. So let's go to settings, domains, add domain. And here we will type the domain office365concepts.com, click use this domain. As of now, we will only add TXT record for this domain because we just want to verify this domain in Office 365 tenant. We will not configure MX record and CNAME record for now because all of our mailboxes are still in on-premise. And if we will point MX record and CNAME record to Office 365, in that case, our on-premise users will not be able to receive emails and auto discover will not work for them. So for now, we will only verify this domain in Office 365. So copy the TXT value and go to public DNS. Here we will create one TXT record. At paste the value detail value and add record. So we have added TXT record here. Let's go back to Office 365 portal and let's click verify. So the domain is verified. Click continue. Now Office 365 will ask you to verify MX, CNAME and SPF record. For now, we will not verify these records. So you can simply close this wizard. Now here we can see office365concepts.com domain is verified. It will show incomplete setup because we haven't published rest of the DNS records like MX, CNAME and SPF. So you can ignore this warning. Now the last prerequisite for Exchange Hybrid deployment is Azure AD Connect. So we will install Azure AD Connect on domain controller. So first we will download this tool. Let's run this tool. If you want to know Azure AD Connect installation or the concepts of Azure AD Connect in detail, I have a playlist for Azure AD Connect videos in my channel. You can go through these videos and you can learn Azure AD Connect in detail. In this particular video, I will not be able to explain each and every step of Azure AD Connect installation. So let's select customize. I will not make any changes here. I'll click install. On this screen, I'll go with password hash synchronization and click next. Under connect to Azure AD, we need to type the credentials of our Office 365 tenant global administrator. Next, under connect your directories, we will add on-premise Active Directory domain. And here we will type the credentials of Enterprise Administrator. Click OK. 
So that is done. Click next. No changes are required here. We have already verified the domain. Click next. Now under domain and OU filtering, you can filter the OUs. In my environment, I will be syncing only this OU that is hybrid. Rest, I will uncheck all these OUs. Go next. No changes are required here. Next. Go with default settings. Here I will check exchange hybrid deployment and rest I will leave as it is. Click next and click install. So Azure AD Connect is installed. So we have met all the required prerequisites for exchange hybrid deployment and we are ready to configure exchange hybrid. In the next video, we will run hybrid configuration wizard and we will configure Exchange Hybrid on our on-premise Exchange 2019. So that is all for now. I will see you all in the next video. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.